Welcome to day four, the final day of the Dog Gut Health Summit. If you are new here and you haven't joined our previous Q&As, welcome. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley. If you're coming and returning from our other calls and have joined us, welcome back. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. I'm an integrative holistic veterinarian who has a real special interest in specialty and treating and healing gut health issues, skin allergy problems, using an integrative approach, using fresh food, food therapy, Chinese herbs, acupuncture, acupressure, essential oils, which was a big talk today, and all sorts of modalities and finding the root cause, because that's the key, is we have to find why is that symptom of the gut issues, the allergy problems, why is it there? And I hope you have a much better understanding after going through four days of amazing talks from a wide variety of speakers, my veterinary colleagues, and it's been so amazing. So if you're jumping in live, I would love to hear from you. Drop in the comments where you're joining us from so I can shout you out for taking time out of your busy day to show up, learn more, and be the best pet parent for your dog. And Deborah, I see you. It's so awesome that you're here. I love that you're listening to the essential oils one. Ruby, no worries. Glad you're back. Hey, LaRonda, so great to see you. So happy to hear that you are learning so much. Uh, we see Aha, I'm sorry if I say your name wrong, from Seattle. JK, great to see you back from Ohio. LaRonda, yes, from Ala representing Alabama. That is fantastic. So who here has been able to watch day four? All of the talks that we're gonna go through a brief overview of those and then we'll dive into your questions. Hi, Susan, I see you. So if you've been able to watch it, drop a one in the comments section. Hey, Lindy from Virginia, Ruby, I love that you're learning so much. That's fantastic. So if you've been able to watch all the talks, drop a one. Those talks are live for 48 hours from when they're launched on that day. So you still have a little bit of time. If you haven't gotten to it yet, if you're finding the content really valuable, uh, you can actually, and you want to have lifetime access, you can always upgrade to the premium package so you can re-watch any of the talks at any time. Uh, perfect. Not, a, not all, but a few. Great. That's fantastic. There's a lot of information there. Um, so it's fantastic to see you all here. Um, and also, too, I want to give a, a final shout out to our sponsors for the Dog Gut Health Summit. Who here has used any of these products or tests? I would love to know. Chi Dog your fair pet organics or innovative pet lab they are fantastic companies we are so grateful that they were supporting putting on this dog gut health summit i personally use all of those companies even before this dog gut health summit was being put together because i know like and trust them and i see results for my own pets but also for my patients uh LaRonda, yes ipl deborah you switched to chi dog for all your pups bookie yes Fantastic. Amy, you are not behind. You are right where you need to be. And I'm super happy that you are here catching up and joining us live. Ruby, you've used IPL. Yes, IPL Innovative Pet Lab is the best. Those ladies are amazing. Actually, they all are. I know all of those ladies that run these companies um, and built them up. They are fantastic human beings doing amazing things in the pet space. So I wanted to give them a special shout out. Now, the talks for today kind of like brought us home these four days. And yesterday we talked about the optimal nutrition for a healthy gut. And this is where we dived into what are some herbs and other modalities or remedies can we actually use to really help support an optimal gut? Now, keep in mind when you are learning about all these things, it's not about just giving more, not giving the next thing, just because you're like, that sounds like a really good idea. I should do that. The foundation is always to solidify the diet. That is really, really important. And I find a lot of dog parents, if they're experiencing gut health issues or allergy problems, if we're feeding a processed food diet, I want you to put that money into a minimally processed diet because that might be the only thing you need to adjust to help your pet. How awesome would that be? You don't need to buy all the supplements and fill, fill your cabinets and pantry with supplements. We don't want supplement graveyards around here. That's something that I'm always talking about. That's really, really important is going back to the foundations, reminding ourselves we don't need to add all the things to the pet food bowl and thinking about why am I seeing something like diarrhea? 
Why am I seeing allergies? Why am I seeing ear infections? Why is my dog itching? And working from those principles and then healing the body through the frameworks that a lot of our speakers have been talking about. That is how I heal my patients and their chronic health issues. It is a journey sometimes and it requires patience. Even though we can get really frustrated along the way sometimes, that patience is really, really important. So keep that in mind. Um, but let's go through some of the talks because there's a lot of really good information to help guide you to use in place of a lot of conventional medications to resolve and even heal the gut lining, support the microbiome, calm down inflammation, support detoxification, support emotional health, which we know can also lead to things like leaky gut. And that can then lead to increased inflammation. And then you start seeing all the symptoms your dog might be experiencing today. So Dr. Megan Barrett kicked us off with healing the gut with herbs and superfoods. And she talked about so many of my favorites, ranging from chamomile, which of course is one of my favorites that I love so much. I'm a chamomile tea girl and I love using it with my patients also. And it is so powerful and beneficial for healing things like ulcerations, inflamed skin, calming down anxiety and the emotions. Um, that's really, really helpful. She also talked about things like fennel and using licorice and all sorts of different herbs and superfoods. Um, so I highly recommend looking at that talk if you haven't, um, because and taking lots of notes, because there's a lot of supplement companies. One of the ones that she shouted out that I also use a lot is Animal Essentials. Um, so there's a lot of great companies that we can use that make it easy to give our pets those types of herbs. And then Dr. Zach Pilasoff talked about the benefits of pre and probiotics for dogs. That's a huge controversial area, of course. Uh, are probiotics helpful? The big key takeaway, of course, is also making sure that we're getting prebiotics in there. That is the food source for the beneficial bacteria. He also touched a little bit on the postbiotics and the things that the, the microbiome, they're actually making after. So that's where our short chain fatty acids, which are going to help reduce inflammation, are really important. Um, so there's a lot of factors that go into that. And I find a lot of dog parents, when they start switching to a minimally processed food, they tend to leave out fiber or a source of you know, soluble, insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber is going to be what the microbes digest. The body, our bodies don't take that in. Your dog's body doesn't take that in. It is for the microbes, the microbiome to support them. And then they produce post metabolites that are going to help support the gut, the gut lining. So prevent that leaky gut, reduce inflammation, help support neurotransmitter production, support hormone production. So it does, it's very, very beneficial. And we need to be thinking about that. And then Dr. Rob Silver, who joined me live last night for our Q&A, of course, he's the mushroom man and the CBD guy. He talked all about using mushrooms to support the gut microbiome and GI health. And he talked about mushrooms like lion's mane and talked about chaga mushrooms and some different types of mushrooms that you can use for very different reasons to really help heal leaky gut and support the immune system. So mushrooms are very beneficial and very powerful. Um, keep in mind, there are other factors we need to make sure um, that we are taking care of. Emotional health is a big one that I find is commonly missed that can create leaky gut. And we can give our pets all the supplements in the world. But if we are all stressed out and our pets are stressed out and we're not calming down that nervous system, then we're going to be not getting the results we want. So that's something to be aware of. Dr. Ava Frick on day one talked about hair tissue mineral analysis tests and the nervous system and how we can go into kind of an SOS state um, where we're in that fight or flight response and then everything else shuts down, including digestion. So keep that in mind when you're learning about these different remedies. Once again, I go back to foundations, gut health and nutrition, physical health, immune health, your environmental health, which is detoxification, and of course, your emotional health. It's an easy way to think about your pillars and make sure that you're not missing something and you're not just reaching for a new supplement. And we've actually missed an entire pillar of health. I want you to think about it like a crack in the wall and the foundation of the house is sinking, but we're sitting there plastering the crack in the wall over and over again. But in reality, the foundation is broken and we have to fix the foundation so the crack doesn't keep coming back. 
So keep that in mind. And then we heard from Dr. Susan Wagner using essential oils for our pet's gastrointestinal health. Who here, if you're using essential oils, drop a five in the comment section. I wanna see who my other oily pet parents are because I love essential oils. It was one of the first modalities over a decade ago that I got into. Um, so definitely drop a five if you're using essential oils. Also, let me know if you're having issues there. So you might have concerns of using essential oils too or worries, uh, but Susan, she broke it down uh, so beautifully on how to use essential oils safely, not only for dogs, but for cats and also large animals too. So you got some like bonus time in her webinar. So definitely check that out. Um, essential oils are really, really powerful. They can be used when they're used properly and safely, they are very helpful. Less is more and also quality is key. Uh, we have an entire course on essential oils that breaks that down and how to use it safely for your dogs and cats. So you can check that out at the natural pet doctor if you wanna dive deeper into essential oils, but definitely get started by watching uh, Dr. Susan Wagner's essential oil talk. And then I finished the day with uh, how to heal the skin through nutrition and gut health. And I talked about how a lot of times we mistake allergies for actually a deficiency or an excess with our diets. And so dry skin and itchiness can actually be something where we're not getting enough zinc in the diet. And there's nice whole food ways that we can add in more zinc or we can, if we're deficient in omega-3s, there's a lot of great whole food sources. And I listed out some brands and some testing that you can do to identify if maybe we have actually a deficiency in a nutritional area that's leading to the skin problem and it's actually not an allergy. So definitely watch that for kind of the, get, getting like the your, your mindset wrapped around whole body medicine and how everything is integrated and how it plays together um, to really understand like where those pillars of health are so important for making sure we're not missing something. So those were all the talks from today. I definitely go back through, rewatch them, take those notes, dive into it, start implementing and taking action. Um, but now let's open things up for some questions and we'll finish out our last Q&A together and then go from there. All right, first question. Cheryl, I cook for my seven month old golden pup and want to make sure the meals I'm making for her have enough nutrients. Should I occasionally add dog foods like the farmer's dog or Ollie? So, this is a great question. And there's there can be a lot of hesitation. I'm this is I'm so glad you're asking this because, especially for larger breed dogs, we do have to be very careful with puppies that we're not doing excess calcium and we're not doing too little calcium. Now, there are a lot of great free resources that help guide you. One of my go tos that I absolutely love is a company called Perfectly Rawsome. So, Perfectly Rawsome. Dot com. Uh, Ronnie, she's done some summit talks also on nutrition and raw feeding. She actually helps guide you with the amounts to use for puppies, for kittens, for adult dogs. Uh, she's a fantastic resource. Her resource link is actually in our free nutrition guide. So if you downloaded the free guide off the pet summits, when you registered, you can also go to the website and download that again, or you can go to the naturalpetdoctor.com, uh, which is my website you'll be able to go to the resources and the shop page and download the free simple guide to nutrition. The back page is literally an entire resource section of free resources, other books that you could purchase too to help guide you. So we don't make so we make sure that we don't make a mistake with that. I do recommend rotating in like you mentioned using brands that list for all life stages. That's really important that that's listed on the pet food too. Um, so rotating in Quality diets, I recommend getting Susan Thixton's The List. Those are the brands I trust. There are a lot of them are listed in my free guide, but that's who I go to. She does her research. Uh, she is very clear on this person is transparent. They are providing certificate of analysis. They're sourcing um, all of those things. They're balancing, they're testing really, really important guidelines for the pet food industry, which isn't very well regulated. Um, so I highly recommend getting the list. It's like $10 a year to support the crazy amount of research she does going into that. Um, and any of those brands would be brands I would recommend trust and I use for my own pets too and my patients. All right, next question. Janine, can tripe be used as a food as well as a treatment? 
If so, how much and how often would you add to a normal meal for a healthy 20 pound dog? So I can't give specific dosages for that. Um, but tripe is a great, it helps with digestion. It can be used as a low phosphorus source of meat for especially pets with your uh, kidney disease or kidney insufficiency to help lower the phosphorus content naturally, still using whole foods and not lowering your protein content. Um, so I do highly recommend it. Um, I would once again use some of those other resources to get specific recommendations for the amounts to feed your dog. Next question. Even though I currently feed raw, I'm looking to take the next step to try and remove my dog off of his Apoquel. Any recommendations that you have in terms of supporting him with his allergies? This is a great question. This is something I cover in my Better Gut Health program um, because you're not alone. There's a lot of dogs who are fed raw and have itchiness and allergies. Who here is also in that boat? Drop a two. If you have a dog who's on a raw food diet and is dealing with itchiness, allergies, possible ear infections, chewing on their feet. So drop a two to show them that they're not alone. Um, so this is where we have to go back to those foundations. You've optimized the diet, making sure it's a balanced diet over time is key too. So when I hear raw food diet, I don't know if it's completely balanced. Um, if it's a homemade diet, some of the common deficiencies that can occur can be things like omega-3s, your zinc, your vitamin D, your magnesium, vitamin E. Um, so there are some tests that you can do. I talk about the omega-3 test in my presentation with omega quant um, to make sure that we have enough omega-3s in the diet. A lot of pets, especially pets with uh, allergies, itchiness, chronic issues, chronic GI problems are omega-3 deficient. VDI labs is another lab that also tests for vitamin D levels, which is really important for the immune system. It is a hormone. So I said vitamin, but it's actually a hormone. And it's very, very, very important. So this is something where making sure we're not deficient or that our body, our pet's bodies need more, um, that's where testing can be really helpful. So going back to the foundations, this is where I always start. Okay, we've got gut health and nutrition. Let's talk about that pillar. Okay, we've got the food dialed in. I'm assuming that this is a balanced pre-made diet or a balanced uh, homemade raw diet, but we also have the gut. So what is involved with the gut? This goes for everyone here, by the way. So this is going to be your microbiome. How do we know if there's dysbiosis or an overgrowth of E. coli or clostridium? You have a great test where you can do animal biome to look at the different strains of bacteria. Do we have enough diversity? That's really, really important. And that can lead to things. If we have dysbiosis, that can lead to leaky gut, which can then lead to inflammation in the skin that's causing the allergies, that's keeping your pets stuck. And that has it does have a big factor with the food you're feeding but we need to fix that first. So we wanna make sure the microbiome's okay. Do we have leaky gut or a problem with an inflamed gut lining, a problem with digestion and breaking down the food and the nutrients? Do we have a problem with the local immune system in the gut? This is really important. IPL, Innovative Pet Labs, has a functional medicine stool test that you can run now. So if you're like me and you like to know what you're treating, those two tasks are really, really powerful at making sure that, that can, you can identify what you need to use to help heal the actual problem. Now, you can always use supplements that are going to presumably heal leaky gut. Adored Beast has an entire leaky gut protocol. There's also products from RX Vitamins like Nutrigest that combine things like zinc. L-glutamine is really important amino acid to help heal tight junctions. Um, as you learn today, or you will learn, uh, lion's mane is also helpful. Chaga is another mushroom that's helpful. Uh, using things like slippery elm or marshmallow root, which is a mucilage to decrease inflammation is also really important and helpful. Um, so those tests help. So that's just the gut health nutrition pillar. So physical health, this is important. If our dogs are not getting enough exercise, they are not going to stimulate their lymphatic system. Who here knows what the lymphatic system is? Give me a four in the comments if you're like, I know what a lymphatic system is, or you're like, I've heard of it, um, but I'd like to know a little bit more. The lymphatic system is a key component of your dog's detox pathways. This is where the, pro like the toxins get processed and then they go into the lymph. The only way the lymph moves, you guys are awesome. You're on it. Lisa, Vren, LaRonda, uh, the Cotton Home team. Uh, Janine, I see you guys. Thank you for putting a four in there and letting me know. You've heard of the lymphatic system. But the thing with the lymphatic system is it's passive. 
We need movement. We need muscle contraction. We need to move our bodies. And it's the same with our dogs and the same with our cats too. Cats that sleep all day, not a good thing. You see my sleepy kitty back there. Um, he's getting ready to move, but we play with my cats every day. We get them moving. We engage them so they can get that lymphatic system moving. Now that's one key component of the, the physical health pillar, but that's directly related to how we get the toxins out. So physical health is really important. So if it's like negative 50 where you're at right now, you might be moving a bit less. So that'd be something to think about. And then we also have the immune system. A lot of times when we have allergies or atopic dermatitis, allergies are ramping up that immune system. It is on fire. We have lots of inflammation. It is over responding. It is like SOS, like something there's foreign substances here usually because the gut lining is inflamed. The gut should be held together by tight junctions at a very simplistic level. It is one cell layer thick. That is all that is separating it from food, bacteria, and toxins on the inside to your bloodstream and the immune system. Now it's a little bit more complex with mucus layers and a few other things. Um, your microbiome is a big part of that too and supporting and removing toxins and bacteria and things like that. But with allergies, that immune system's ramped up. That's why we get hot spots and we see inflammation and redness and irritation and we're prone to secondary bacterial infections and your dog is chewing. So we need to calm down the immune system. We need to kind of give it a break. And this is where things like licorice is really helpful. It's an adaptogenic, but also too, it's going to help. So it's helping with adrenals. Those are all stressed out. That's what's pumping out cortisol, a stress hormone because the body's like, what's going on? Fight or flight, whoa, what's, you know, what's happening? And so we can use certain types of herbs to help calm that system down. Now, this is also where Innovative Pet Labs is really helpful too, because if the immune system's not detecting and removing things that it should be, that's gonna engage with the immune system on the other side that's closely, intimately connected with the gut lining. And so that secretory IgA, that Innovative Pet Lab tests, if that's low, we need to boost that up. This is where supplements that contain things like arabinogalactin or they contain like colostrum, they're going to naturally boost immunoglobulin A, which is really important key component for that immune system. And then this is also where too, we want to reduce histamine and calm that down. So there's a lot of supplements and herbs that we can use to help calm those things down. Uh, quercetin is nature's Benadryl. Um, that's going to naturally lower histamine. It's also going to help heal tight junctions, which is great. So it's nice when we tap into the power of herbs and nutraceutical. And then there's other Chinese herbs that I use uh, for my patients and my programs that I run that you can use to help calm down based on the pattern. Um, this is where also, too, if we have secondary infections on the skin, we can use certain types of topicals or herbs to help mitigate that naturally versus using antibiotics that are going to potentially, or they will, wipe out more of the microbiome. Now, here's my disclaimer. I'm not against conventional drugs. There's a time and a place that we need to use them, but it's something that I find that I don't need to reach for them a lot because I use the power of herbs and essential oils and my other natural remedies. So that's something where partnering with someone is really helpful. We have programs where we partner with people. There's people here um, that are in our programs too that I work with very closely to make sure you're on the right path. Um, so, you know, definitely connect with someone that you resonate with that is using the tools that resonate with you to help you get those results. But that's the third pillar. The fourth pillar is environmental health. We have to open up the detox pathways. I've been talking a lot in the past couple of days about those hair tissue mineral analysis tests because we run them at the natural pet doctor with a fur sample. We run them from pets all around the world and they can show us heavy metals. And it blows my mind how many times I see an allergy pet who we presume is allergies and it's actually a heavy metal issue that's increasing the level of inflammation and blocking your pet from healing. Heavy metals are also an issue with the gut and can lead to things like leaky gut. It can also lead to brain inflammation. So if you have a hyperreactive pet or an anxious pet, that gut brain access through the vagus nerve. So uh, Rob, Dr. Rob Silver talked about that today. We touched on that. 
that's a really strong connection. And if we have a higher level of inflammation or an upset microbiome, that inflammation will actually affect the brain and make, we call it brain on fire. So imagine if you have brain on fire, you don't feel very good. Um, the other thing too is heavy metals can pass through the blood brain barrier. So we need to know because there's certain types of binders that we need to use to extract those out of the body. And they can be strong. And that's why I use those hair tissue mineral analysis tests to make sure that we are, we're getting the vitamins and the minerals and the nutrients balanced. Because if we go for a strong detox first, we can cause a Herxheimer or a detox reaction. You should not see detox reactions if you are doing things properly and those pathways are open. That is really, really important. So definitely there's a path, there's frameworks. Those are things that I teach and I practice with my clients. Um, I break it down in our Better Gut Health program. Um, you've heard a lot about the frameworks through the summit. So this is really, really important because if you're, you have a really sensitive pet, you have to go slower, you have to use lower dosages and you need to follow those frameworks very carefully and testing can be very powerful. The final pillar I do have to mention is that emotional health pillar. Once again, if a stressed body cannot heal, I'm going to repeat that. A stressed, and I'm going to include inflamed, a stressed inflamed body cannot heal. And this is where there's a lot of great, I talked about it in my talk today. There are a lot of great free resources that you can tap into for yourself if you are feeling stress. Who here's felt stressed in the past couple of years? Give me a three. Give me a three. Nasley, I see you. Pookie's brain was on fire because of gut problems and helped you to fix that. I love you and Pookie. So who has a three? A three. So this is where stress. Anyone have stress? I'm, I'm like, it's. I feel like I'm, um, what is that movie? Like the, um, <laughs> I'm about to be taken out. <laughs> what is that? Does anyone know that symbol? Oh my gosh, I'm picturing it in my mind. Anyways, random side note, random thought brain. Okay, anyways, <laughs> a three stress. At some point in the past few years, the world has melted down and a lot of us have felt some type of stress and this world is in a crazy place. Right now it's like full moon and we have solar flares happening. Like there's a lot of crazy energy. Energy impacts you, it impacts your animals and the stress, if we're not managing it, can impact and impair healing. So do the breath work, do the gratitude journaling, even if it's like, I'm so grateful the sun came up today. It's going to shift you internally and your animals will feel that energy coming from your heart centered space. Also, even just blessing the food can make a huge difference or if you have to use those medications. So if you're like trying to transition off Apoquil or Cytopoint or conventional med and every time you're like, ooh, I don't want to give that, like that's energy. And so this is where like, thank you for providing this to me to help heal my pets. And I know this sounds crazy, but it does transfer more positive healing energy to that. You know, thank you for this medicine while I'm figuring out how to heal my pets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will figure this out. And that alone is enough. And then you continue on the path of uncovering the root cause. So I know I took a lot of time to answer that question because it is so important for most pet parents here. Really, really important that we're not missing those root causes. And it's so commonly missed. And we just, we expect fast results. Thank you, Amazon, for like one hour delivery. Um, and immediate, so fast, immediate, and the next thing should work. And if it's not working, it's not, if it's not working immediately, it's not working. If you've been on this journey for a long time, we do have to have patience. It takes time for the body to heal. It did not take overnight for it to break. So keep that in mind. Okay, perfect. Next question. Tibetan Terrier, Anita, Jean. A Tibetan Terrier has dozens of sebaceous cysts, derm, and regular vet. I've never thought of an egg. Um, any recommendations, food or herb would address this issue? This is a great question, very common. Um, there can be some genetic predispos predispositions. I hope and I always recommend doing a fine needle aspirate. So I don't know if that's been done with a veterinarian. What that means is it's a very simple, easy, non-invasive procedure that most animals, dogs and cats tolerate very well. So that fine needle aspirate is where your vet will take a needle and they will 
put it into the little lump or bump, bump, and they will kind of move it around a little bit, get some cells out of that lump or bump, and then they will actually push that onto a microscope slide and look under the microscope to see what types of cells are present. Um, sebaceous cysts are usually benign, but there can be other cells that are more what we call malignant or aggressive that we need to rule out to make sure it's not something like a, a cancer, like a, a cancer that's that needs to be removed, like mast cell tumors or things like that. Um, there can be other more aggressive forms too, where we need to do a biopsy. So you remove the, those lumps and you send it into the lab for what's called histopathology. So that's really important. From a Chinese medicine perspective, I'm going to bring this in because this is part of my background and my training and what I use every day with my clients, is when I start seeing lumps and bumps, I go, we've got a lot of stagnation. We have a problem with the way things are flowing through the body. It can also be a sign of blocked detox pathways too. So this, I would 100% be doing a hair tissue mineral analysis test. That'd be my first go-to be looking at microbiome if you can. But I want to know, do we have a heavy metal problem? What's going on with the levels of inflammation? Those sodium levels are not related to salt in the diet on a hair tissue mineral analysis test. They're going to show us level of inflammation. So I would want to know what food are we feeding? Are we feeding a more minimally processed food? If not, 100% first step, even without other testing. First step, let's get to minimally processed. Let's support the gut. Um, using a variety of fresh foods. Uh, so Megan, uh, Dr. Megan Barrett talked about a lot of foods that you can add in, medicinal mushrooms, even button mushrooms. Those are part of medicinal mushrooms that you can chop up, like, you know, lightly cook and a little bit of grass-fed butter or ghee is excellent way to serve those as a food topper. Adding in an egg also is another superfood topper um, that has a lot of great nutrients, easily absorb protein also. Um, but I'd be looking at, I'd be thinking about why is the body not flowing well? Chi, blood flow together through the meridians. Why is it stagnating? It's like a river. Think about a river. The water should be flowing nice and smooth. If we end up with too much water, it's like rushing, it's flooding, and that's no good either. We don't want that. If we start drying up, we don't have enough water in the river, we start getting stagnant pools of water. You think about, I want you to imagine, think about those like brown, dirty pools of water that are stagnating and they're yucky and mucky. And you're like, ooh, and you like walk by them, you got your dog, and you're like, oh, don't, don't go in there like Otis, you know, don't drink from that. You're gonna get sick, right? That is stagnation in the body from a Chinese medicine perspective. So this is where using Chinese food therapy, so using more blood tonic foods, these are things like freeze-dried beef liver. Beef is a great blood tonic. And adding those into the diet can get, that get the blood and the chi, the energy moving. It's adding water back to the river. Um, so... Your chi tonics are helpful, your blood movers, your blood tonics. This is where also to Chinese herbal medicine can be very powerful. So partnering potentially, if you can, with a Chinese medicine veterinarian that can help identify those imbalances and then use herbs based on your pet's pattern to get things moving again. So that's kind of where I'd be looking and going. Um, if you were to do one test to start with, I think your hair tissue test would be really helpful to see and then to kind of get a plan for what do I need to focus on. But number one, if we're feeding a more processed food diet like kibble, do your best to try to move to a minimally processed food. Okay, next question. Lisa, are chicken organs okay? Sometimes the store is out of beef liver. They don't have any other organ meats, if not suggestions for replacements. This is a great question, Lisa. So when we're looking at balancing diets, this is where <laughs> the pet, we have to have some type of standard, right? We need to be able to track and have some type of organization in this industry to keep pets as safe as possible. But here's the thing. So if we're following it by calculations or if we're looking at food as a whole, variety is key, right? Um, and so with organs, if we were to break down the nutrient content of those organs, Generally, we're going to see differences in nutritional like value and the vitamins and minerals that make that. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I touched my microphone. It's sensitive. You guys can hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay. Um, in the comments, just let me know. 
So with your organ meats, this is where you're going to have different nutritional content. So if we're exchanging, so let's say you get a recipe made from a nutritionist that's saying beef liver, and then we have recipe drift. We talked about this last night on the Q&A, where all of a sudden we start adding or tweaking. Thanks, guys, for letting me know um, that you can hear me. You start tweaking and adding or changing the foods. That's where if that recipe is based off of a formulation to make sure we hit certain nutritional requirements, we're going to have an unbalanced diet. That's a huge problem. It happens all the time. It's also why my veterinary colleagues are terrified of homemade diets because it happens all the time. So that's something to just be aware of. And that is why you hear don't don't make your own food, that kind of thing, because it can. And a lot of times it does end up being nutritionally deficient. Now, in this situation with Lisa, where we're like, you know, I'm out of the beef liver, but I have chicken liver available. Great. Variety is awesome. Variety is important that we're rotating. We're getting in like the, the liver content. You could be following ratio diets too. There is not one right or wrong way for some of these formulations. I would say follow people that are very successful and know what they're talking about um, in terms of nutrition versus just a lot of the recipes online that are super unbalanced. So if you see just some random recipe that's like meat and vegetables, not balanced whatsoever. So, but for this, if we need to rotate sometimes because we're out of it, that's fine. Um, but making sure that we are following some sort of consistency with the diet is key. So Lisa, I don't think there is any problem with that. Um, as long as your pet's fine with those changes, because your chicken, even with the meats, they're going to have different energetic qualities. They're going to be also from a physiological component. Like if you have a sensitive pet, a lot of times your white meats are going to be easier to digest than your red meats. Awesome. Perfect, Lisa. Thanks for your comment. Okay. TMAC, is there any evidence linking LARPAR um, gulp to diet or toxins? Are lipomas diet related? You know, this is a great question. I could theorize all day in my speculations. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I haven't seen any specific research around that. Now, when we think about so LARPAR for diet or toxins, I want you to think about if we're giving a poor quality diet, or we're highly toxic and we have lots of inflammation in the body, things are not going to work as well. It's just like common sense, right? Um, things are going to be more likely to break down. We can't get toxins out. We get more inflammation. And if nerve function, nerve function will be impacted, right? Um, so if we're not getting a lot of good fats or we're lacking choline um, or phosphatidylcholine, um, we're going to have issues with the nervous system. Um, and the other thing too with your lipomas, lipomas are a, a storage of extra fat. What does fat do? Fat stores toxins, right? So when the body can't handle the toxins because the detox pathways aren't working well or open for multiple reasons, the body goes, well, we're going to have to do something with this. They kick it back out into the bloodstream, doesn't go through the whole liver process through the gut, out the gut, out the kidneys, it goes back in and it gets stored. And it gets stored a lot of times in fat. This is why from the human side, uh, for people who are overweight, if you drop a ton of weight, you will feel like trash because you just dumped a ton of toxins. And this is where binders are really helpful too for that, FYI. There's ways to properly detox to support yourself so you don't feel like trash. Um, but the same things apply for our pets. So just based on those principles alone and just looking at common sense and physiology, I would say that makes sense to me and my experience. Now, it's really hard to find data on that. And I know people are really, um, they're, Science is important. Research is important. But also, too, I feel like thinking about physiology and common sense a lot of times, too, is also very helpful. So that's how I approach it and how I look at it. And it helps a lot. Like we get lipomas to shrink. They may not go away 100%. Um, but we also the pet feels better and they don't start popping up with more and more or have issues. Um, and then also, too, I use a lot of Chinese herbs if we are dealing with like laryngeal paralysis. A lot of times the pattern there is what we call a triple burner obstruction. So it's where, you know, your energy should be flowing from the what we call the upper burner. We have the middle burner and the lower burner. And it's kind of like a door that should be allowing the energy between the upper and lower burner to go. But it gets stuck. 
and things get stuck. And so we don't have that connection going on with the nervous system. So we can use herbs that actually help with that imbalance too. So that's another neat way to help. Um, Bookie, I did see, do you have recommendations for getting rid of lipomas? I actually have an entire blog post at the naturalpetdoctor.com um, with supplements and an actual protocol and where you can get those supplements. So I definitely recommend checking that out because there is a process for that. All right, next question. Lindy, all this info has been fantastic, but a bit overwhelming. Yes, it is. It's like I'm fire hosing you, right? <laughs> it is a fire hose. And I under, I have we're 40 minutes in. I got to throw it all out there. You can watch the replay though, too. Keep that in mind. If your dog is currently on chicken and rice due to diarrhea, where should I start? Pumpkin, slippery elm, Esculardi made it worse. Okay, Lindy, great question. This is a common thing. There's so much information out there. There's so much information in the pet summits. This is why working with someone who treats it all the time is really, really helpful. So if you need help, please reach out to us. I'm more than happy to guide you to resources. That goes for everyone here. We may be able to help you with programs. We may have free resources. We may be able to send you to other resources outside of us too. So that might be a better fit for you. But always you feel free to reach out to us at the Natural Pet Doctor um, at info at the natural pet doctor.com. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Now, Lindy, for your question with some dogs with the diarrhea and the rice and the chicken. So there's different types of diarrhea from when we're looking at a Chinese. So I look at Chinese medicine. So I have both. I have, you know, your conventional Western medicine and we have our Eastern medicine approach. And the integration of the two is where the magic is at. The magic's in the middle, right? They both have pros and cons. Um, it's integrating the two that's really powerful. And for diarrhea, this is where I find conventional medicine has limitations. And that's why so many pet parents are stuck where they're at. So chicken and rice is kind of like the old go-to. And if we have something like what we call a hot diarrhea or damp heat diarrhea, what does that look like from a Chinese medicine perspective? The stool's really stinky. They're got lots of mucus. We're possibly seeing some blood in that stool too. This is where, that's where your chicken, which is warming, could actually potentially aggravate that. So using something that's a bit more cooling. Now, a limited ingredient diet, 100%, we want bland, limited ingredients. That's going to help calm things down. Now, chicken can work for some pets, but just keep this in mind. If it's not working for you, chicken's not always bad. Chicken got a bad rap because of kibble, by the way, and the, the really poor quality chicken that goes into those processed pet food diets, the rendered product. Now, in terms of chicken. So if it's not working, which it may not be in this situation, this is where we want to use something that's maybe a bit cooler energetically. A good one that's lower fat, easy to digest, easy to find would be something like white cod and getting butternut squash. Butternut squash has a lower glycemic index than pumpkin does and can be a little bit better tolerated. So this is also where too, if we're seeing a Slippery elm and marshmallow root are both are what we call mucilages. So they're like putting a Band-Aid on an inflamed gut. They work really well for a lot of pets. But if we have dampness, so if we have in, like sometimes pets that don't respond well to that, it's actually a sign of dampness in Chinese medicine. So this is where we wouldn't want to use those. It's not going to help. This is where I'd reach for something like a binder, like RX clay would be beneficial. We talked about the different types of binders a couple times over the past few days. We want to bind those toxins. And then this is also where your butternut squash will help provide a little bit of fiber. And then some dogs will respond to adding a little bit of like psyllium husk. Some do not do well. This is where we have to play around with each pet as an individual. Um, the other one for your damp heat, like diarrhea, so bloody stool, really mucusy, really stinky, this is a short-term solution, everyone. This is not meant to be used long-term. Is an herb called Coptis. Coptis tea pills. Um, they are very powerful because they contain high concentrations of the of berberin. Berberin is a very has very cooling properties. It also is a great antibacterial, anti-parasite. I use it a lot for we have like Giardia, E. coli, things like that. 
Um, but it helps tremendously if we do have like bloody diarrhea that's happening or a damp heat condition. We usually use it for three days and then we stop. Um, but maybe try switching the type of protein and then using uh, using a binder instead and see how your pet does. And then you want to go through those frameworks. So if you rewatch it, once this is over the replay at some point, listen to what I like what I talk about with those frameworks and those foundations, because that's where the key is to finding out why did this diarrhea happening if it's a chronic condition. We have an entire free masterclass on it too. Super happy to share that with you. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, there's a lot of different reasons. This is what makes it hard to figure out, um, but there's definitely a way forward to help you. So I hope that helps a little bit. Okay, next question. Pamela, confused on if dogs can be given fresh dried herbs or teas only, and if raw veggies can be few or if they need to be lightly cooked and steamed. Okay, raw veggies, great question, Pamela. Raw veggies, we want to lightly cook and steam them, um, especially for pets who are sensitive. That's really important. For your fresh dried herbs or teas, you can use all of the above. So this is where, keep in mind, when we think about the way, like herbal medicine, they're all in different forms, right? Teas are super safe. That's why I use them all the time. And I talk a lot about them um, when I'm talking on online because any pet parent here usually can source an organic tea, whether you're drinking it yourself and using things like chamomile. Chamomile would be another one that we could use for diarrhea to kind of calm down inflammation. It also has anti-spasmodic too. So if your pet's kind of like, oh, they're kind of, oh, they look painful. That's probably because they're having some stomach spasming. Chamomile is really helpful for soothing that. So that's where a tea is a great option. If you're kind of like a little bit weary, you're like just dipping a toe into it, like herbalism. You're like, I don't quite know what I'm doing. This, Am I going to mess up my dog? Teas are fantastic because you can brew a cup of tea, remove the tea bag, and then you can mix in the tea with the food or offer it to them. I have patients that will just drink the tea also, which I always find amazing. It's awesome. Um, so teas are just like, they're low concentrated, very safe, easy to use. Um, you're not going to overdose them, you know, just use organic. I use mountain rose herbs for like bulk herbs. I love them. Um, they have a lot of great options too, single herbs that you can get and use. Now here's the thing with dried herbs. Um, with dried herbs, now there's a company solutions um, pet pet solutions. I'm going to say it wrong. Uh, Chelsea Kent, uh, she, they have a great product where they use dried herbs for different things. Um, so she gives you the dosages that you use for that. So I would use a company that's telling you how to use that. The other thing too, I know this is a dog summit. Do I have any cat parents here? Just, we're going to throw a little nugget of things that I love because I love cat cats. I have three cats. I love dogs, obviously. Also give me a, let's do a one. Do I have cat people here? Because if not, I'll just move on with the dried herbs. Cat people, one. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we got to like give the cats some love. They never get enough love. And I talk all the time about them. Perfect, Cheryl. Thank you. Bookie, thank you. Dried herb gardens, putting them down. You can use this with your dog too, but cats are notoriously um, stubborn, I guess is the best word to say. Like they don't always want to cooperate with what we want to do. And that is why I love their beautiful little souls. But with dried herbs, you can put them down on an herb garden, a towel is what I mean, and a tablespoon of dried herbs. Julianne um, from Naturally Cats is the one that does magic, magic. Highly recommend following her if you don't follow her stuff, where you put down the dried herbs and your cat will like sit by it. They might eat it. They might roll in it. They might just like do nothing with it. And it's a great natural selection option to allow them to choose what their body needs. So you can use any of these dried organic herbs and the things you learned about in the talks today, like all the essential oils come from herbs. Essential oils are the very most concentrated form. That's why less is very important to keep your pets safe. So we can take the dried herbs and we can put them down and allow our pets to self-select them. It's an amazing amazing principle. It works really, really well. I love watching my cats engage with their herb garden or not engage and that's okay, but I'm giving them what their body needs and allowing them to choose. So that's dried herbs you can use. And then you also have like your tinctures or even fresh 
So this is where like I use fresh catnip for my cats. Um, you can chop up some fresh parsley, some fresh oregano, um, the cumin we talked about last night. You can put in a little bit of fennel, give a sprinkle of, um, you know, some of the herbs and the spices that you have in your cabinet. That is fantastic to use and can be very powerful and beneficial for them. Um, dandelion leaves are a great natural detox to help keep in mind the properties of those plants. So if you see them peeing a little bit more, that's their body naturally responding to the way that that plant works. So that's a normal behavior. So I always recommend like learning about these and getting some herbal books so that you can better understand, like if I give this and I see that, oh, that's a normal sign. That makes sense. Their body's detoxing and they're like peeing more because that's what it does. It's a diuretic. Um, so there's a lot of great different ways that you can use it. Teas are a great like starting um, to dip the toe in and like see some of the amazing results. And then if we need stronger concentrations, that's when we go to tinctures and then your essential oils are very powerful. So I hope that helps. Julie Ann Thorne from Naturally Cats, Simply th Simple Things. I'm talking about both cats and dogs, um, Vryn. So both cats and dogs, you can use all of the above with. I use essential oils for cats too. Uh, Susan Wagner talks about essential oils for cats. So I just wanted to clarify that because I think that was an important point to say. Okay, next question. Amy, our pup has had abnormal stool since we got her two months ago. Could nerves last that long? She seems so healthy and happy other than that. So Amy, great question. If the dog is really, I don't know if they're really stressed out. I don't know the history. First things that come to mind for me are um, what was going, I don't know if you got them from a rescue or adopted them, or if you got them from, a, or got her from a breeder. I'd be asking if you did for either or rescue breeder, uh, what were her stools like before? What was she being fed? Has there been a diet change? Have we done vaccinations? Have we done any flea tick heartworm preventatives? Has there been any medications that were given? Those are all factors that can trigger this to happen. And we've upset potentially the microbiome. And now we've led to inflamed guts. We have an like imbalance in the microbiome. We could have a stressed out immune system. So those would be key questions I would be looking at and getting vet records to see what's been done, what's been given um, to kind of work through, okay, do we have what's called a vaccinosis where that immune system was really overstimulated and now we're seeing a delayed reaction where the body doesn't know how to respond and we see diarrhea because of that. The delayed reactions are not the fun ones and they're the most common of like the pets that I work with in my programs because you'll hear correlation does not equal causation. Has anyone heard that statement? Correlation does not equal causation. Well, here's the thing. You know what's happening in the body is when we give something, we are on a spectrum of health at any single point in time. Optimal health is here. Everything is running really well over on this end. This end is death, okay? I don't mean to be grim, but this is the end of life. We are constantly moving along and fluctuating on a daily, hourly basis based on stress. So let's say today, today's great. I woke up feeling good, like stress is managed, right? Say I eat something that I don't normally eat, like a cheeseburger, like McDonald's, massive diarrhea probably would ensue. Um, I would move more here and then I cleanse or I, you know, fast or whatever. I go back this way. It's the same with our pets. So we have a new puppy or a new dog. The stressors move them here. New household. That's just a fact. Like that is happens for everyone. Okay. Then we take them to the vet, more stress. Then we take them and get vaccines, more stress. And all of a sudden we get to a place where we may not see symptoms at first. They seem fine outwardly, but internally they're creeping towards a cliff. And when we get to a place where the bucket is now overflowing, that's like falling off the cliff or at the bottom, we need the ambulance to come and take us away. And you're like, what happened? They were fine one day and now they're not. That's what's happening is the body is not able to cope with the amount of stressors internally, externally that were put on that body. And now we're seeing those external symptoms. So we've got to figure out by going back to those pillars, asking those questions to figure out what was that trigger and start healing the body by following those frameworks and those healing foundations. So I hope that helps. Yes. And Lisa, the healthier, happier you get them, the more they can handle. They are more resilient. So then you can handle those toxins. Toxins, you need to be aware of them. You shouldn't be afraid of them. 
um, because if you have open detox pathways, then you can definitely, you can definitely handle so much more. That's so important. I love that. Thank you. Okay. Eha or Eha. I think one of our cracks is emotional because I'm still grieving the loss of my soul dog, my whole heart. Do you have any advice? I have a YouTube video. It is actually my most popular YouTube video, Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor, and it is grieving the loss of your pet. I filmed it right after I lost my soul dog, Finn. I cry in it, by the way. It was very emotional. It was very raw, but there are tools that you can use to help you process grief. Now, grief is a journey and every person's journey is the, their personal one and your own. And there is no right or wrong way for processing that grief. So it is okay to allow yourself to feel that grief and it will be okay with your, with your like new, your new pet. Now, here's what you can do, because I think it's amazing that you're seeing that, that there is that connection and you're like, you're aware, you're like, this can impact them. What we can do, this is a great place if we're seeing something where we need to support the emotional health side, adaptogenic herbs are really powerful. Ashwagandha, it's going to help with those stress hormones. This is where CBD can help calm down the endocannabinoid system, but that's also really closely connected to the gut, the nervous system, the brain. So using some of those, chamomile tea is a great option in this situation. So we're using different herbs for that emotional health component to calm that down. So you can go through that process of grieving um, because I think we tend to hear like that emotional health side. We're like, oh my God, I can't feel stress. I can't show that I am feeling things and we need to feel it. We need to feel it to process it because if we don't process it, it gets stuck inside of us and that's no good for anyone. So give yourself grace during this difficult time. I'm sorry you lost your soul dog. I hope you find some help in the YouTube video. If you can't find it, please reach out to us. Super happy to share that link with you. Um, but use some adaptogenic herbs, some calming herbs, some calming teas for your new pet. And this goes for both dogs and cats. Cats, use your herb gardens, put that those dried herbs down. If you have a cat and you're in that same situation or you're going through something else, that's really stressful and emotional. And that will make a huge difference for your pet. And that will give them the tools to help them be more resilient in handling that. So thank you for asking that and sending you love and peace. So, all right, let's do one final question. Deborah, hello, Deborah. And one of the talks that talked about using lemon balm. Yes, Melissa, that's the other name for it. I've grown my own, dehydrated, put it in a bullet to grind up. Can this be sprinkled on the food? If so, how much? All 30 pounds, pup. Um, yes, you can definitely use that. Um, keep in mind, you'd have to give a ton to cause a problem. So if you're just like sprinkling it on, um, I think that'd be a good starting point. Keep in mind when we're using like these fresh herbs, these beautiful herbs, they can be more like pungent or aromatic depending on the medicinal properties of that plant you're using. So some pets, like the smell of it will like put them off of their food. So keep that in mind when you're using it. But I would just start with like a sprinkle and see how they do. You could always use self-selection too. Put it down on the ground and see what they do with it um, and see how they engage with it also. Um, the sense of smell is amazing at bringing in things and stimulating the nerves. There's tons of nervous system, innerva nerve innervation in that nose. Um, and it directly, I if anyone, I have this on my desk, these little like nasal sticks. So when you open them, there's like a little thing in there with the essential oils and you like smell it. This has peppermint, rosemary, and grapefruit in it. And it awakens you. So your peppermint is stimulating. It helps with your memory, your rosemary, and your brain function. And it works the same for our pets too. Um, so have fun with like self-selecting and using hydrosols and, you know, offering a drop of essential oils. A lot of times with essential oils too, I'll put a drop on my hands. I do rub them together um, and I just let them be. And I let my cats, because I don't have my Finney anymore, my, my German Shepherd. I used to use essential oils all the time with him too and diffuse um, them in the room. He loved them. He would lay by my diffuser. And I just let them do what they want with it. If they want to come to me, sometimes they'll lick my hands and I use safe brands and I'm using the appropriate dosages for them. So there's a lot of great fun ways that you can engage with it. Just start with low amounts. Um, you know, think about yourself, like what would be an appropriate amount for myself? Um, little sprinkle for a 30 pound dog. 
Um, you wouldn't want to eat a bowl full of lemon balm. Um, you know, I think that would be rare. Maybe I shouldn't say you wouldn't want to. I'm sure someone out there would, but uh, the majority of people like that doesn't feel appeasing. So keep that in mind too, when you're looking at that. So I hope that helps. Yes. And I love Copaiba essential oil in their food. That is a great natural anti-inflammatory. One of the safest essential oils out there helps with our arthritis, pain, and also gut health. Um, so that's a great one to have in your medicinal cabinet. And I'm seeing all of your beautiful comments. I just had to read a few of them out loud. Bookie, thanks again for your time. Truly helpful recommendations for our pet's health. JK, wonderful summit. Thank you for all your positive energy. Great information. You guys are amazing. My Yorkie life, your presentation was great today. Oh, you're all amazing. My heart is so full. So thank you. I... We are at the end of our time together. Um, once again, if you want all the replays, you, there is the premium package available. There's also Dr. Rob Silver talked about the workshop. He's going to be dialing in the mushroom side of things for healing the gut and some in the skin also. So that workshop information will be emailed out to you on Monday. As I mentioned before, if any of the resources that I shared... If you're having trouble finding things, we have a ton of resources. Please reach out at the naturalpetdoctor.com. I work with pet parents like yourself. I specialize in gut health and skin and allergies. It is what I work with every single day. It is part of my journey finding this path over a decade ago on the human side with inflammatory bowel disease. And it can be tough when you're alone. So Find a partner, find someone to be your guide, to help you, to guide you along the way so that you don't have to try to figure it out on your own. I was in that state and it can be hard. It is really hard. Thank you. That There's my website right there that you can click on. Send us a message. Uh, we have a lot of different programs also that dial in and talk about these frameworks, foundations, give you additional resources, tools, the amounts to use for different herbs, supplements, essential oils food therapy. That's my jam. That's my passion. That's what I love doing. And I most importantly, love hearing the results that you get and seeing your pets thrive. So thank you so much. I've, it's been a pleasure to be the host for the Pet Summits. It's the second time around, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Most importantly, I'm grateful to have a community of pet parents like yourself who want to learn and do the best that you can to support yourselves and your pets. You are why I do what I do. So thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing from some, some of you or reach out, um, follow us, let me know how your pets are doing and how you're going. I love to hear your feedback. All right, everyone. Thank you again. Have a great evening and enjoy watching the rest of the videos. All right. Take care.